Okay, I think everybody who was waiting is now in. Uh, good day to you. My name is Madelon Nouwen. Uh, I work at Breda University of Applied Sciences in the Netherlands. And um, today I will explain to you what is our university about, what kind of programs do we offer, and of course you can ask all your questions. I'm here together with one of our students, uh, Richelle. Richelle, are you there? Um, hi, yes. I just connected to the audio. Okay, no problem. Can you briefly introduce yourself and uh, explain what you are studying? And then we will come back to you later with your full story. Uh, I need to open my camera first. So I'm, uh, my name is Richelle Angeli, and I'm a second year student. Second year student. Can you hear me? Yes, yeah, it, it yes, was yeah, it, your audio is a little bit blurry and we cannot see you. Okay, let's give uh, now you are there. Okay, can you can you please say again because it was a bit unclear? Uh, my name is Rochelle and I'm a second year uh, student from Build Environment. Okay, perfect. Thank you. And then also with us here is uh, Bruce Hancock. He is our special representative in Australia covering uh, Southeast Asia, including Indonesia. So Bruce, do you want to say? Uh, hi, everybody, and uh, and welcome. Yes, I'm, I'm based in Australia, but I was uh, 13 years in the Netherlands as a, a director. So I know the Netherlands and, and Brady University very well. So uh, welcome and um, I, I can also be here at any point to answer any questions you might have after the presentation. So right now I'll okay. hand it back to uh, Madeleine and Rochelle and uh, enjoy. Perfect, thank you. So we are well represented from Breda University of Applied Sciences. So I hope that we can uh, give you some more information. And uh, of course you can ask everything you would like to know. So just to start with a brief introduction about Breda University of Applied Sciences or BUAS for short. Uh, we are a rather small institute with around 7,000 students and 21% uh, of them are international. And that is more than average in the Netherlands. Uh, we also have some Indonesian students like uh, Richelle, so you would definitely not be the only Indonesian student with us. Also, our staff is very international, more than 17%, and we have a lot of experience. Uh, we were founded in 1966. We have international students from all around the world, around 70 different student nationalities, and the countries colored in orange are the countries that we currently have students from. We work with a wide range of industry partners, uh, more than 90 different um, companies and also government institutions in uh, 134 countries. So depending on the study program that you are following, um, you can, for example, do your internship at or get guest lectures from um, people from uh, airlines like Singapore Airlines, KLM Airlines. If you study leisure and events, there is uh, several amusement parks that we cooperate with also for example Disneyland uh, for media we cooperate with Google Samsung uh, television stations both in the Netherlands and abroad for games Ubisoft Sony Houdini Epic Games uh, several hotel groups like Hilton Marriott we also have special um, uh, uh, programs for students from the hotel school with Hilton for facility for example with JLL, logistics, UPS, built environment. We work with uh, transport companies, with the government, and many more. These are just some examples. We are nationally and internationally recognized. Uh, we were the best University of Applied Sciences in 2018 and 19, and we have a wide range of top rated and number one rated programs in the Netherlands compared with other uh, institutes in the Netherlands. Before we continue, I would like to show you a short video. If you do not hear the audio, then please press the unmute button. Is it your dream to start your own enterprise after graduation? 
to start working at the other side of the world. Uh, now we are losing the sound of the video. We have both professional okay. and academic bachelor's and master's programs in the following domains. Build environment and logistics, games and media, hotel and facility, leisure and events, and tourism. Discover what Breda University of Applied Sciences has to offer you. With some 7,000 students from over 100 countries, we are a small scale and diverse University of Applied Sciences. Lecturers know your name and are easily accessible for consultation or advice. We collaborate with top companies at home and abroad. So, you can do your work placement or graduation project at large names in your field. Samsung, Dalpa, Arriva, and Hilton, to name but a few. We collaborate with universities and universities of applied sciences worldwide. Would you like to do research or a project abroad or go on exchange? It's all in it for you. In our learning community, Learning to run a business is central. We stimulate you to start your own enterprise. You can even choose to do so as a graduation project. We have a new and green campus close to the city center of Breda, a university town for excellence. The campus is a place to meet up, make friends, and get inspired. We're looking forward to meeting you at our Breda campus. Okay, that was a short video to give you an introduction of uh, Breda, the city of Breda, and also Breda University of Applied Sciences. So just to recap everything, why should you come and study at BUAS? Well, first of all, I mentioned already that we have a very international environment, both among students and also lecturers. As you saw, Bruce was introducing himself. So he's originally from Australia. He was working with us for many years, and we have teachers from all around the world. We focus on quality over quantity always. So you are not a number. Uh, we want to give everybody studying with us the best possible education. And that also means a very personal approach and connection. So the teachers will know you by name. You can call many teachers by their first name. And it is like very informal. We have connections with and international work placements at big companies in the field, such as Hilton, Disneyland, and Google. And you can also start your own company. So you can develop your CV during your studies and your own company can be your graduation project. Furthermore, we pay a lot of attention to students' well-being, especially in these difficult times, in COVID times where students had to study fully or partially at home, especially for new students just arriving uh, from abroad to the Netherlands in a new country, new culture. We have really, um, put everything in place to make the students still feel home. They can reach out to their mentor. In some cases, we allowed students to come on campus to talk face to face um, to yeah, make sure that everybody is well. Uh, also, our campus is brand new. Uh, we have a new campus since 2018. It's very modern, innovative, uh, green. So it's not only a place to study and follow lectures, but also to meet your classmates, to study by yourself or work in teams and project groups, uh, or to just relax a bit. And the historic city of Breda is a great place to, to be. We have currently nine different domains, and these are data science and artificial intelligence, games, oh, sorry, uh, built environment, hotel, facility, leisure and events, logistics, media, and tourism. This is an overview of all our programs. We have bachelors in all the domains that I just mentioned and masters in most of them. I will very briefly go through them, uh, but if you would like to have more information about one of our programs, please do visit us at our booth later uh, or watch one of our webinars. And I will refer to those later, how you can access them. So to start with built environment, and Richelle can talk about this uh, more later uh, because she is one of our students built environment. This program is about mobility, urban planning and urban design. 
This is rated one of the best programs in the Netherlands and it won the first prize in the own category. So this is in some countries also called uh, city planning. So this is not architecture in the field of designing buildings, but really designing cities. And as you can imagine, the Netherlands is very densely populated. Uh, we have to make sure that a lot of people can live in a small area. So the Netherlands is quite specialized in how to use the environment and the cities in the most efficient way. Also, something that you can uh, learn is um, water planning. So the Netherlands, actually two thirds of the Netherlands used to be under or is under sea level. Uh, so we have to make sure that uh, that whole environment is safe. So the Netherlands is also very specialized in um, water management. Then facility, this is a program which is not so well known abroad, but in this study program, you learn how to arrange a pleasant, safe, healthy and efficient work environment. You combine policy, strategy and sustainability. And also this program won the first prize in the own category. So what you will learn in this program is uh, when you are graduated, you are the person in a company, a hospital, a government institute to make sure that all the employees can do their work in a safe and pleasant way. So for example, you are responsible for the office furniture, that this is uh, economically for everybody, that the lights are correct, that the air is um, healthy, um, but also that everything is like sustainable. That is a very important thing at this moment. So you are the person taking charge of all those things and guiding all the employees taking care of that. Then we have also a hotel school, hotel management. What is special about hotel management at Buas? Well, first of all, we have our own in-house training company called Sibilicious. Uh, this is a restaurant where uh, students, staff, but also inhabitants of the city of Breda can come for a three course lunch or dinner. And the students of both hotel and facility, they run this restaurant. So they are in the kitchen, they serve the tables, uh, they are the host of the restaurant. So that is a way where you learn your first uh, real working experience. As I mentioned briefly already, we do cooperate with Hilton and we have a special Hilton honors class for the top students uh, of this study program. And also this program is one of the best uh, programs in the Netherlands. In leisure and events, we have several programs. The first is leisure and events management. Our Academy for uh, Leisure and Events belongs to one out of only five World Leisure Centers of Excellence, so quality of education is guaranteed. We have an extensive international network and like actually all our programs, we work with real life assignments. So these are assignments that students do for real existing companies and if that um, uh, is like founded by the company as a good idea to implement, then those um, programs, projects are really implemented. So you are not just studying something, but you really get the experience from directly from the field and uh, work in projects with other students. So you are ready for the working life after your studies. What you can see here is um, an amusement park, and that is one of the tracks that you can study in the field of leisure and events. Then we have also a Bachelor of Science leisure studies. The difference is that uh, the other bachelor was a professional bachelor and this is an academic bachelor, so it's more theoretical. This is the only academic degree program in the field of leisure in the Netherlands. And this is an interdisciplinary education preparing you for a career in, for example, policy, strategy or research. In logistics, we have two bachelors. Uh, the first is logistics management and the second is logistics engineering. Logistics management is more economic and financial where logistics engineering is more technical and you focus more on the IT side. There is a special program for highly talented logistics students. In the field of media, we have the Bachelor Creative Business and here you study creative concepts, consumer experience, trends and developments, scripts, formats, and management in radio, TV, magazines, VR, AR, and online media. So this is a very broad program where you learn about TV, about radio. Um, we have 
our own production house where you learn how to make radio. And for TV, you can, for example, go to a very special project in uh, Arizona where you make your own TV show. So this is way broader than, for example, journalism because you learn about all the different media fields. And also this program won the first prize in its own category. Again, in tourism, we have uh, several programs. Uh, this is one of our oldest programs. So there is um, over 55 years of experience. Uh, tourism management is a broad economic degree program with focus on sustainable tourism, socioeconomic impact, digitization, and experience design. And there is many options to shape your studies according to your own interests. Like in leisure, we have also a Bachelor of Science in Tourism. So this is again a more theoretical program. And this is together with Wageningen University and Research. In this, uh, all our bachelors are four years, except for the Bachelors of Science. Those are three years. And in this specific Bachelor of Science uh, Tourism, you study first in Breda, and then later you go to Wageningen. So it's really a combination. You research developments in tourism and the consequences for society, environment, and the economy. And this is the only academic bachelor's program in tourism in the Netherlands. We have also a gaming program. It's called Creative Media and Game Technologies. And in this program, you actually learn how to make games. This is one of the best in the world and the first in the Netherlands. Uh, we have our own game studio and we have partnerships with Sony, Epic Games and SideFX, just to name a few. In this program, you can, you can choose between different tracks and that those are game design, uh, production and uh, visual arts. So already before you start studying, you choose one of those three tracks and you do your admission and application um, in one of those three tracks. Then we have a brand new um, program, artificial, uh, it was called artificial intelligence and data management. Now it's called applied data science and AI. And here you learn about data science, artificial intelligence, neural networks, programming in Python, ethics and law, um, of course, and other things, but this is just a summary. And you do projects in our own data lab, uh, for example, about image recognition, data mining, and a project for the municipality of Breda. So these are all the bachelor programs. We have also two uh, pre-masters. The first is the pre-master leisure and tourism studies. And this is the best preparation possible for an academic master's program. Most of our students who study the master of science, leisure and tourism studies do this pre-master first. In this pre-master, you work on a solid theoretical basis and on your research skills. And this gives direct access to the master that I just mentioned. We have also a general pre-master, Strategic Business Management and Marketing or SBM. And this is the fastest route to a Master of Science program because you can do this already during your bachelor. This is a quite demanding track if you would like that, but during any of the four year bachelor programs that we offer, you can do this pre-master in your fourth year. So you don't lose any time in that sense, um, but you get both your certificate for the bachelor you studied and also for this pre-master. And then you can directly, you can go directly to a master of science. This is a quite demanding track because uh, usually you get 60 European credits ECTS per year, but for this one, it's 75. You get in-depth theoretical knowledge on business-related issues and the acquisition of academic skills in research and report writing. And this is a very small scale study environment with only 30 three zero students per year. Then we move on to the master programs. Uh, we start with the master game technologies. All our masters are one year. And this is a year long graduation, self-directed learning and individual coaching. So as a student, you come up with your research topic and your teacher professor is there to guide you along the way. But you are the one doing the research and um, making sure that that everything is done and you can choose your own topic within a wide range of topics possible. We do call Co collaborate with international game industry and uh, we have a very international team of lecturers and professionals. 
In the field of, uh, this is officially under the field of leisure and events, we have also an MBA program, it's called uh, Imagineering, and this is also possible executive. So if you already have some working experience, uh, then I would refer to the executive track. Uh, Imagineering is about social and business innovations, about new emerging complexity-based approaches aiming at innovation by empowering creativity in a strategically envisioned direction. Uh, we have a very international network of companies, universities and alumni from diverse fields. And this is a program where you can get access to with a wide range of bachelors, which uh, creates a very dynamic and diverse classroom. So your classmates are maybe from a total different field than you, so they have a different look at things. And that way you can come up with really innovative solutions to anything that uh, companies might deal with. After this program, there's also a wide range of students who start their own company or consultancy. I already briefly talked about the Master of Science, uh, Leisure and Tourism Studies. Uh, so this is an academic master's program that combines leisure and tourism. So there is a very multidisciplinary approach. Then we have a new master's program called Supply Chain Management in the field of logistics. And in here, you learn how to organize and innovate supply chains. And this program was created um, together with the industry. Uh, so there's very close industry connections. And we really created this program to make sure that students have all the latest knowledge um, about what logistics companies nowadays require from a supply chain manager. Then in the field of media, we offer the Master Media Innovation, and this is also available in the executive track. Um, in this program, you learn how to create new and groundbreaking media concepts. You study innovation, design thinking, and cutting edge media. And this is a very successful blend of theory and practice. And what is very special about our executive track is that this is exclusively online. And this is now available for students um, worldwide, uh, including Indonesia. So you would not even have to come to the Netherlands. You can study this from your home. In the field of tourism, we have the master tourism destination management. And in this master, you learn how to develop strategies for responsible, resilient, and sustainable destination management. In this one-year program, uh, you have different phases. You start in Breda, and after that, you go together with your classmates on a three-month field research. Before COVID, this used to be in Southeast Asia and Australia with three different destinations. So students started usually with a city destination in Australia, for example, Melbourne. Then they moved on to an established tourist destination in Southeast Asia, for example, Bali, and then to a new emerging uh, tourism destination, for example, Cambodia. Then students would do the field research in those three very different destinations and compare them. After that, uh, students could either go back home come back to Breda or stay in one of those three destinations to complete their research. This is based also a lot on peer learning in a very international classroom. So this is, um, I would say, the most international program that we have in terms of places where you study. So these are all the programs that we offer. Um, now I would like to tell you a little bit more about uh, Breda, the city where we are in. Uh, like a lot of Dutch cities, um, we are surrounded by water. So here you can see the little harbor. And Breda is in the south of the Netherlands. Uh, so on the right in blue, you can see the map of uh, Western Europe. And in orange is the, the country of the Netherlands. Breda is in the south. It's actually only like a 15 minutes drive to Belgium. But Rotterdam is only half an hour away. And uh, Schiphol Airport is only one hour away. And from Schiphol or Eindhoven, you can take the train or plane to most uh, European destinations. For example, uh, the train to Paris stops in Breda and in just four and a half, five hours, uh, you are in Paris. So it's a very, uh, logistically, it's a good destination. The city of Breda originated in 1251. So it's a very old city and you can, when you walk around, you can find a lot of old buildings, castle. It is vibrant, it's safe, it's easy accessible. 
Uh, Breda is a city with 180,000 inhabitants. And if you are living, for example, in Jakarta, then this might sound like a very low number. But for the Netherlands, this is actually a medium sized city. And the benefit is that it is relatively small. So I would say that if you live in or around the city center, you are never more than 15 minutes away from campus or from downtown. So everything is close by. Um, it's also very green. We have parks, there is a forest close by and a train station, all the shops you need, cinema. Um, so I think everything is there. To talk about our campus, I already mentioned that we have a new campus and the building that you can see here on the background is an old convent or like monastery. This is totally renovated on the inside to provide you with all the latest technology um, to make sure that you can do your studies um, as well as possible. And this is an inspiring high quality and park like environment. We have now three different buildings. They are together in one campus. All the academies are there. So it's also very easy to meet students from uh, other study programs. And we combine the historic buildings with the new structures. Also, all the supporting services like the service desk, the library, they are also all in the same place. Then you might wonder, what does it cost to study with us? Um, these are the tuition fees for the coming academic year, 2022-23. For all our bachelor's and pre-master's programs, except for the joint degree with Wageningen, uh, the price is 10,400 per academic year. And for masters, and our masters are one year, uh, the price is for most of our programs 11,500 euro, with exception of the Master of Science, Leisure and Tourism Studies. This is 13,400. We do offer scholarships. Uh, for the bachelor programs, we offer the BUAS Bachelor Scholarship, Orange Tulip, via Navigneso, and the Holland Scholarship. Uh, the BUAS Bachelor and the Orange Tulip Scholarship are uh, 3,000 euro in the first year and 1,500 in the consecutive years, so 1,500 per year in year two, three, four. And the Holland Scholarship is one time uh, 5,000. For master's programs, we have the Orange Knowledge Scholarship. And for Indonesian students specifically, we have Stunet and LPDP. Uh, LPDP is for uh, limited categories only, so that's only related to hotel, tourism and leisure programs. For any details about the scholarship, uh, please visit our booth or um, look at our website. What are the admission requirements? Um, they differ a little bit per study program, but generally speaking, for our bachelor programs, you need a secondary school diploma and an English test result. We accept IELTS, TOEFL and Cambridge. Um, for IELTS, it is 6.0 overall, including a subscore of 6.0 for speaking. For master's programs, it's a bachelor diploma in a relevant field. And for details about what is a relevant field for the specific master program, um, please check our website and the same English test results. Only for the Master of Science, it is slightly higher. It is IELTS 6.5 or TOEFL 90 instead of 80. How can you apply? Uh, like, oh, I heard somebody talking. Uh, like all um, study programs or institutes in the Netherlands, you apply via study link. All the links and details are on the website, so don't worry. Uh, the deadlines are 1st of May for our bachelor's programs and 1st of June for master's programs. If you do not have obtained your diploma by then, don't worry. This is the deadline for the first step for the application in StudyLink. You can upload your diploma and also your English test results um, until 1st of July. We have three programs with selection, and those are hotel management, creative business, and creative media and game technologies. Especially for creative media and game technologies, there is a quite extensive selection process. So um, if you want to apply for that program, uh, please uh, check the website for the deadlines and make sure you prepare ahead of time. How can you find out more information? Um, well, you can take a quiz. It's on our website. You can um, check out our virtual campus tour to see a bit more of our campus. 
uh, we have our online open days coming up, the digital discovery days. I will show that in the next slide. You can attend a program specific webinar. So about all the programs that I talked about, we have uh, one hour webinars where a teacher and a student explain in detail what is the program about and uh, you can ask all your questions. You can chat with our students via Unibody, so you can just leave a message on the website and one of our students of that specific study program will reply to you. And that can be about the study program, but also about the city of Breda or any questions you might have. Uh, we are on YouTube, so uh, check us out there and also on social media, for example, Facebook and Instagram. So via this link, uh, meet us, you can find all the orientation possibilities. Then uh, next week on Tuesday and Thursday, we have our digital discovery days, and these are our very elaborate online open days. So it's two times an evening, and I know this is Indonesian time very late. It starts uh, five uh, in the afternoon Dutch time, um, but if you register, you can always watch back the recording, so you receive the recording automatically. On the first day, on Tuesday, we talk about the education system in the Netherlands where we also explain a bit more what is the difference between a research university and University of Applied Sciences. Um, we tell you about job opportunities after graduating and we have a very fun quiz. And then on Thursday, we go more into um, Breda University of Applied Sciences. So a little bit what I talked about today about our institute and the study programs. We also talk about practical matters like housing, finances, and there is a Q&A with our students. So you can ask all the questions that you have directly to our own students. If you have any questions uh, that cannot be answered during this webinar, um, please visit uh, me and Richelle in our booth or send me an email via this uh, email address. And I'm always happy to answer all your questions. And then now I would really like to give the word to Richelle. Can you please explain a bit more about your experiences studying here and um, yeah, what you are learning in, in built environment and what is the typical way of, of teaching at BWAS? Okay, um, so should I do it in English? Maybe it's easier. Yeah, it's difficult for me to say what the students prefer. Maybe you can also talk in Bahasa, then it's maybe more personal. I don't know, maybe I prefer English more. Okay, that's also okay. <laughs> if it's fine. So yeah, I'm studying built environment uh, in Buas. And the reason why I choose Buas for my bachelor studies because um, they offer this course, built environment. And it's like so rare in the Netherlands where you can like find this course even internationally. So that's why I choose Buas. And I also know uh, like listen from friends saying like it's really nice studying in Buas because the teacher and the students are like connected like the teacher always helps the student like what uh, Madeleine said earlier how uh, Buas focus on the quality and not the quantity I can really see that happens in the classroom and then in my course built environment we're studying more like uh, city planning uh, urban design and then mobility. So we're focusing on uh, how does the infrastructure of the city works and how we design city, how we make smart cities for the future, and also how uh, we will arrange like water management in the city. Like for example, currently my lab project, the lab is like one of the biggest um, course. It's about uh, water management in Jakarta. So we are, we are currently finding a way to tackle uh, flooding in Jakarta. And it's in our uh, project for this semester. And then from my experience in uh, Buas itself, I would say it's a really nice experience. I really like the campus. The campus is so nice. It's so new and modern. And they have a good cafeteria there. And then the classroom is also big, it's so nice. And then like what I said earlier, the teacher and the student is so nice and so international. So we have a lot of international students in our class, so we will not be scared like, oh, will I be the only international students in my class? And then the, the teacher is also pretty international. I have some teachers who's from South Africa and from India. 
and also uh, the teacher often helps us a lot when teaching so when we have question we we want feedback they will they will always help us and give us uh, how we could like do our project how we will do this and then oh, i would say that um buas is more of a project based university it's it's really nice if you if you really like doing stuff like if you don't like reading or you you prefer more doing any doing stuff like what i what i did i prefer drawing more so i that's why i choose buas also it's nicer and then because of that we have less exams and we have more projects to do like making reports or this uh designing something and from what i know in hospitality management because my roommate is studying hospitality management she's like she is the one who's like cooking in the kitchen and then helping in the student desk and then uh who's she's also the one the she's also the one who's in the cafeteria and like oh what do you want for lunch something like that so i would say it's really nice project like project based not project based i forgot how to say it it's like activity based it's really nice um and then i would say we also have a lot of field trips and excursion going on even though it's COVID, uh, we still have some field trips and excursion. And I believe that before COVID, they have they offer more field trips. But now, for example, um, my class, we have field trips to Rotterdam. And then in April, we will have field trips in to Barcelona in Spain to focus in our study of mobility. So it will be very nice. And then in the, in the third year, I will say, uh, we will have an internships and I, I believe internships is really important for us, especially students, because we will know more about the working environment after we graduate our school. And then uh, internship in the Netherlands, I think is also will be a really nice opportunity because we will know a new environment and I think it will be nice. I ha I'm not in the third year now, so I don't have much to say about internship, but I've started making my portfolios and everything. And I don't know what else should I talk. In general, Buas is so nice. I really love this school. <laughs> and everything is so nice. The students are all so friendly. And then even like outside of school, we will like hang with each other. And like we can go to the city to just go to a cafe or a restaurant to eat it's it's really nice even the city in general <laughs> yeah and Richelle you studied at an other Dutch institute first right before Bivas. yeah I also I also studied in another Dutch institute first and it was a research university and now I moved to applied science university because in my opinion research university is more like you know you're doing like readings you you read a lot of books and then you need to like understand those theory it's more theoretical and then i think that's what i could say it's just like more theoretical you're reading you're like learning history you learn how how is this working and then in buas we work we just work do the we do assignment do projects we also base those projects from like theoretical stuff, like some, maybe we get, we also read books, but probably it's just like one chapter, three chapter. And then we're like, oh, we do our project based on those uh, theory we study. So we really, what is it called? Like, yeah, it's, uh, it's a combination of theory and practice. Yeah, it's like, com com yeah, it's, it's a it's combination of both. Huh? You're right, Rochelle. It, it's 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 project based. Yeah, That's project the right based. Term. Some yeah, call it problem based learning, but it's actually project based project, learning, yeah, which means combining having theory be more meaningful by actually applying it and working through yes. it. Yes, you know. Yeah. Yes, that's what I also find uh, exciting because what I learn in class, I could also like put it all in table and like 
designing, making my own design. Like I designed some area in the Netherlands for my project. And I think it's really, really nice. And in the past, in the past university that I went, I also took the same course, but it's so different. Like there, I didn't have the chance to like really draw and like do what I like. And then in Buas, I can like draw and like do my projects and then like give out my ideas into the paper. And now we're learning it even in computer, we're using like software to make it more nicer and more perfect. Yeah, I think maybe. maybe... Sorry. Oh, sorry, man. Go ahead, go ahead. No, I think one of, one of the benefits, um, because when I came from, I went to university in Australia initially, and then I did my master's in New York, and then I came to Holland, and it was this quite a big split between academic and applied. And um, I found that reasonably strange because I'd been from the industry for 18 years. And I just kind of stumbled across education and at Buis and loved it and stayed there for 13 years, which I think also says something. But um, so I never made that split in my head between um, academic and, and applied, but I, I, I have really found, and I think it's growing around the world, that the reasons you mentioned, if it's theoretical, that can be great for certain, certain people, but if you're, as a student going through four years of education, you want it to be meaningful. Um, and the nice thing is that it's becoming increasingly relevant and obvious to industry that the graduates from project-based are more industry ready and relevant. Yes, I, I, I think I really agree with you because from what I see, I think when I, from all of this uh, like project-based thing and then internships, I think when I graduate, I will be more ready to like uh, do my future job because I already have the, my skills and then like the education, I like the sm small theories, I already have it. And we have like the skills also. So I think it's much nicer because we're more ready to, for the future job. And you've been working along the way in those internships. Do you know what I mean? It's it's been yeah. It's yeah. not just you. You get used to actually the reality of of yes. trying to apply and do things. So yeah. you can go through and make your early mistakes and early wins before um having the same experience in in reality. Yeah, and I think uh, Braid is very good at that. We've been fairly ahead of project based learning. Mm -hmm. yeah, and just to explain very briefly to um, the attendees who do not know the difference. So in the Netherlands, there's basically two types of universities. There is on the one hand research universities and on the other hand universities of applied sciences. And as the name already says, BUAS is a university of applied sciences. So where in a research university, the name research, uh, you study more in a theoretical way. So you study the theory and you prepare more for a career later in, in an office in research to become a researcher consultant. While at a University of Applied Sciences, you do both the research, you learn the theory, but you also learn how to apply it in practice. So you do not only learn this is how it works, but you actually do a project to make it work. And as yeah, we explained this that a lot of our projects, they are real life assignments. So we do cooperate with a wide range of companies and they give a real assignment, which is actually a problem going on. And also a lot of our teachers, they are specialists in the field and they partially work at BUAS and partially in the field. So they bring with them to the classroom all the latest uh, knowledge, technology, um, all the issues that they see on the work floor, they explain to the students. And so you are always updated about everything in the field that you study and you get some working experience. Nowadays, after graduation, uh, companies, they ask for working experience and your internship can count as, as work experience already. Um, yeah. I saw there was one question in the chat box, so I will read out the question. Um, I want to ask about the Master of Spatial Planning. I'm 
marine science bachelor. Um, which program do I need? I did spatial planning already in my previous college. Well, I'm very sorry, we have um, a number of masters, but um, Build Environment is one of our programs where we have only a bachelor program. So we do not have a master in this specific field. Um, so yeah, I cannot help you with that. We have masters in the fields of uh, games, uh, leisure, tourism. We have an MBA, um, logistics, but unfortunately not in spatial planning. Is there any other questions? We have about 13 minutes left, I think. I think there's a new question. Hmm. Could you give insights about game development and also what kind of job students usually end up doing after finishing these studies? Bruce, would you like to take this one or? Yes. <clears throat> um, well, obviously, game development or the game industry is enormous <laughs> i just read today that um potentially it'll take over netflix in in streaming of games and during the whole COVID experience um of course students couldn't go on internships quite often but it wasn't a problem for games because it's a very online industry so students could stay in their apartments and have their internships and work remotely so in general as a as a large insight about game development games is industry is way bigger than the film industry globally and it's only growing and ironically COVID also helped that because what do you do when you're stuck at home <laughs> You, you do things you wouldn't ordinarily do. And sometimes people who weren't gamers started playing games. Um, from the viewer's point of view, the Brady University point of view, um, there's three main specializations, which is art, and that's artists, you know, digital, and uh, but also physical, game designers and programmers. So they tend to um, end up in games companies after that with a very high employment rate, um, depending on what specialization they did, which is, so to answer your question in brief, that they'll start at a, a junior entry level according to their specialization, which will be artists, visual artists, um, game designers, uh, or programmers. But then they can move up to, um, to, to jobs like, uh, creative directors, you know, doesn't matter what specialization, etc. But uh, at Brady University, everyone starts, obviously, because of the entry uh, needs and qualifications with a certain area they, they, they're good at or are interested in. But the first year is a whole foundation year, they can change along the way if they'd like, you know. Um, but yeah, in general, they end up being um, yeah, visual artists or uh, production designers or programmers after they graduate, if that helps. Yeah, thank you, Bruce. And I also put a link in the chat box um, where you can find more information about uh, getting a job after the Bachelor of Creative Media and Game Technologies with uh, some more job examples. Are there any other questions? Anything about one of the programs, admission, finding a room, the city of Breda? Finding a room in Breda is hard. Yeah, maybe we can talk a little bit about that. So um, I would say everywhere in the Netherlands, not only in Breda. Oh, yeah. It is in the Netherlands. To find a room. Like I already explained, the Netherlands is uh, very densely populated. So uh, there is like shortage of rooms. So the advice is to start early. Um, we, we do, sorry, I saw a question coming and I will reply that in a moment. Um, we do offer about 65 rooms per year for uh, students from outside the European Union. So including Indonesian students. So how it works is that when you are admitted to one of our programs in June or July, my colleagues from student office, they will send you an email 
uh, with some login details and then you can log into a website and you can see which rooms are available. Uh, those rooms are for one year and then you can look for another room in that year. They are furnished um, and uh, the costs are around 400 euro per month, a little bit depending on the room. And that is also the price for most of our rooms. They range between like 350 to 500 euro, depending on the size and the exact location in the city. And if you would like to have your own apartment or studio apartment, that is a little bit more expensive. Uh, most students in the Netherlands, they have their own room, uh, like bedroom, maybe a sink, but they share the kitchen and the bathroom with other students. So that's the, the most common uh, way. Um, so we do assist in that, but the advice is really to start early. And there is also, apart from um, the platform that we provide, uh, students uh, find their room via Facebook, for example, or via other groups. Um, yeah, so that's, that is possible, but yeah, start early. Maybe, maybe I can add that the living cost here in the Netherlands is around mm -hmm. 800 until 900 euros per month where yeah. uh, 400 ish is for live, living for your room for renting your room and then for your like pure living costs like your for your groceries or like going out going to restaurants i think it will be like uh, probably for another 400 euros for another 400 until 500 euros it depends for each person like how much do you spend in usually in daily life yeah but generally speaking i would say that indeed that is the amount that most students uh, spend that is a very good average uh, food is more expensive than in indonesia um, but if you go to depending on the type of supermarket where you go there's also indonesian toko you can find some indonesian food as well yes. but for example if you go to the market outside um, that is generally a bit cheaper than in for example the supermarket and there is some restaurants that offer student discounts so if you show your student card you can get some discounts so there is ways to save a bit money and you will definitely find your way around there and we actually have also some some youtube videos about that where students um, give their advices how to yeah save money and how to live like most efficiently and financially uh, before the time is up let's go to the question that came in um, I want to ask about the master supply chain management. Do I need a pre-master? Well, this depends. So for the master supply chain management, um, in theory, you do need a bachelor in the field of logistics. Um, and although there are some exceptions made. So if you have a bachelor in another field, but you did, for example, a minor in logistics, or you did an internship in a logistics company, or you have work experience in a logistics company, or you had somehow a project in the field of logistics, sometimes exceptions are made. So if you do not have a bachelor in the field of logistics, then um, please take a look at the website or visit us later in the booth and I can give you more information. Um, and sometimes the, the teachers will let you do some kind of assessment to evaluate your level in the field of logistics. And sometimes they give you time in the summer months to prep for the start of the master. So if you do have a relevant bachelor diploma, you do not need a master. But this is all, it depends on individual cases. And as I mentioned, we are a very small University of Applied Sciences. So we take every case individual. I cannot really say a hard yes or no. Um, so please visit us later or send me an email with your bachelor details so I can look into it. Okay, a few minutes left. Any burning questions still? Don't be shy. Maybe I can also add, I think I forgot to say, uh, BUAS also uh, give scholarships and I also got scholarship from BUAS and it's it worked 3,000 for the first year and then 3,000 euros for the first year and then for the upcoming year, it's 1,500. And when you're applying, you just need to check, like, click the checklist that you want a scholarship and then they will sort it out and inform you later if you get the scholarships or not. 
Yeah, so the scholarship is, the Buwas Bachelor Scholarship, it's very easy. Just in the application, you can tick the box. Um, yeah. So I would definitely uh, recommend that. And um, we do look at a number of things for the scholarship. And one is our, uh, what we call the focus countries. Uh, and Indonesia is one of our focus countries. So um, as a student from Indonesia, you have a slightly higher chance uh, than students from any other country. Uh, so definitely uh, give it a try. And if you need more information about the requirements and how to uh, apply for it, please take a look at our website under scholarships. It's already on the main page uh, or ask us in the booth and we will give you all the information. Um, also, I would like to bring to your attention, again, I mentioned in the presentation already that we have our digital discovery days uh, next week on Tuesday and Thursday. So please register. I know it's very late Indonesian time, but if you register, you receive the recording so you can always watch it back. Um, and in April, this is not yet on the website, but I want to already mention it. We will uh, do our Buas Connects sessions again. We did that last year and we will include Indonesia. And what it means is that we have um, two students uh, from Indonesia uh, talking in Bahasa. So you can ask all your questions in uh, Bahasa about uh, studying at Buas, about living there, about the study programs. And it's very informal. It's just like chatting with friends, that kind of style, nothing official. Um, but just to give you all the information you need to also meet already some other students. Uh, so this is especially for students who already registered with us to get like the latest information. So that's still the things uh, I had. And if you have any questions left, uh, thank you. Somebody learning Dutch already. That's nice. <laughs> if you have any questions, now is still the time. And otherwise, if you would like to chat in private, uh, we are still in the booth for another two hours after this and then again tomorrow. So no hurry. Madela, can I just do a little farewell? Yes, of course. To say really nice. Thanks, Rochelle, and thanks, Madelon, and everybody being here. And um, yeah, please follow through with questions and and I'll also be in the booth tomorrow morning, Jakarta time, with uh, Elvina, if you've got uh, any questions. But um, yeah, I hope it's been informative for everybody. And thanks, Madeline and uh, Rochelle again. Yeah, thank you for being here. And just to answer very quickly before the room is closed, yes, you can apply for multiple scholarships. And last year we had one person who got two scholarships at the same time, so that is possible. And I think the room is closing now. So thank you all for attending and um, hope to see you in Breda. Okay, have a nice weekend, everyone. Thank you, thank you Madeleine, thank Richard, you. and Bruce. Now I'm going to close the room. Yes, thank you. Thank you. Okay, bye bye.